Well, we were kind of talking about slope. <coughs> Bless you, really? Right after I started recording, <laughs> you start sneezing? You disgust me. Now, <laughs> uh, let's talk about the x-intercept. What does it mean to be an x-intercept? Well, that's true. This is the point where the line crosses. Right, it's the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Now, as we just heard, this is going to happen when y is equal to 0. So every x-intercept is of the form a comma 0. If you look back at some of the other guys that we have graphed already today, okay. Take a look at this guy right here. His x-intercept happens whenever the y is equal to zero. So his x-intercept is right here. That's the x-intercept. Okay. Any other line that I draw. These guys right here also have x-intercepts. What do all of these x-intercepts have in common? The y-coordinate is 0. If the y-value is not 0, then you're not on the x-axis, and that means you can't be an x-intercept. So that's why the x-intercept is always of the form a0. All right. Now, however, uh, let's take a look at the y-intercept. And for the y-intercept, its definition is very similar to the x-intercept. It's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay. And as uh, we just heard, that is when x is 0. And of course, y is going to be some value. We'll just call it b. So here is a graph we had just looked at right here. We can identify this guy right here as the y-intercept. This has an ordered pair 0, negative 4. If I draw some other lines right here, these guys have y-intercepts. And what does every y-intercept have in common? The x value is 0. If you were going to be crossing the y-axis, any point that's on the y-axis has an x value of 0. Okay. So that's what we know right here. Every x-intercept is a0. Every y-intercept is of the form 0b. And this is very useful to us whenever we start looking at some special forms for linear equations. And one of those main forms is the standard form. Okay, the standard form is. Do you guys remember? Ax plus by. Ax plus by is equal to c. Now the conditions that we have here are the following. A, b, and c are all real numbers. A, B, and C are real numbers. And A and B are not both 0. The coefficients for X and Y could be 0, but they just can't be 0 at the same time. Okay. Now, when we talk about the standard form, it makes things really easy for us to find the X and the Y intercept. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to memorize this as some kind of formula, you can. It's not really necessary. But we already know for the x-intercept, the y is 0. Do you all agree? Now, look at this. If y is 0, what's b times 0? Zero? 0. 
So if y is 0 and I solve this for x, what does x equal? How would you get x by itself? Divided by a, so you would have c over a. If I want to talk about the y-intercept, I know that x is 0. If x is 0, this ax is going to go away because that's a times 0. Then what would be the y-coordinate here? What would happen if you solve for y? You get c over b. Now, this is not something that you have to memorize. In fact, I almost never look at it that way. I don't look at it as a formula. I just look at it as almost like a procedure. I know what I'm supposed to do here. But since we're talking about this, we might as well go ahead and talk about what the slope is as well. Because the slope is tied into all of this stuff. The slope is given by negative A over B. So if you like that, you want to use it, you know, go for it. But in the next few videos, we're going to show you how we don't have to have this stuff memorized. It's all going to come out just from just natural observations.